What's up you guys, Michael Lazarecki here. Today we're gonna to be doing a real quick update on the issues that I was having with DaVinci Resolve 18.1 a few weeks ago. Let's get right into that, well, now. Several weeks back, I posted a video talking about the issues that I was having with the new release of DaVinci Resolve 18.1 and really it boiled down to the fact that like every time that I completed a project and went to export that project I would go to review the exported video and my audio was completely completely jacked like sounded like somebody turned up a distortion filter on a guitar at the absolute most wicked thrash metal-y version of it and turned the volume up as loud as possible and blew out the speakers and that's what my audio sounded like all the way through the video. I wasn't exporting any differently than I had been in previous versions of Resolve. There was no settings changes that I was doing differently that had to do with audio or anything like that. So I was pretty perplexed and, and I couldn't figure it out. So I went back to my audio recorder, um, made sure that I was recording at a 48 kilohertz sample rate on my audio recorder, which I am, updated the firmware on the audio recorder to try to see if that made any difference. Made a lot of different changes uninstalled other softwares that I thought might have conflicting audio drivers, uh, reinstalled those. Just, I went through an enormous number of different troubleshooting steps, um, went through the audio uh, export settings and tried to adjust things in there. I always used to keep the audio settings in the export panel at same as timeline for the sample rate, which turned out to kind of be, um, the problem. <laughs> Let me explain. So for whatever reason, the initial version of 18.1 that I got, I don't know why mine was doing this and seemingly not too many other people's were, but for some reason when I had it set to same as timeline, it would export the file in a way where it was like it was trying to export it at 41 kilohertz when my audio was at 48 kilohertz. And it wasn't until I started messing with the different sample rates that I finally found that that was the fix. Well, I think that was the fix because I updated to 18.1.1 and the first export that I did from 18.1.1 had the same audio issue in it. But that's when I started tinkering more with the sample rates and knowing for sure that my audio recorder records at 48 kilohertz, I went in there and I exported it at 41 kilohertz and well that worked all of my audio came out clean so i went through several different iterations of things i uninstalled resolve again reinstalled it and then i set it to 48 kilohertz and exported again and voila my videos were back to normal so for whatever reason there was some kind of bug in the software that was basically thinking that it was exporting at one sample rate when it was actually exporting at another sample rate. I don't know how that stuff works. I'm not a software programmer, but that was the thing that made the difference for me. I have now been double and triple checking my settings when I'm recording and then double and triple checking my settings right before I export just to make sure that everything's lining up and it seems to be working just fine. Now, I did just update to 18.1.2, and it seems like everything's running smoothly. No more laggy timeline, no more audio issues that I can see at this point. Um, I did see a couple of comments that were indicating that in 18.1, people were having issues working in Fusion and having the software crash on them partway through a Fusion composition. I will be working more in Fusion in the new year, so I will be testing that out to see if I'm running into those same problems. I will let you guys know what I find out, if I find anything out, but uh, yeah. So a couple of things I learned over the course of this whole issue is that it is really good to have a backup editing software. Now, not everybody's gonna want to cross-platform learn between DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro or whatever, whether you're a former user of uh, Final Cut or Premiere, whatever that is, but it's good to keep that stuff in your back pocket because now because I still have the full Adobe membership, I was still able to kind of switch gears when I was having trouble with Resolve and go back over and kind of jump right back into doing other projects in Premiere without skipping a beat. I had to kind of like relearn some of the keyboard shortcuts, but it was nice to be able to jump into that and see that I could still do it and really my 
my speed wasn't impacted quite as much as I would have expected it to be. Um, I'm still faster in Resolve, but I think that it's good to have a backup plan in the event that you have an unexpected software issue. Another great backup plan is to back up um, your library for Resolve before you update so that if you do need to um, backpedal to an earlier version, you still have uh, compatible files. That's something I learned. I'll never update again without backing up my project files. So add that to your list of things to remember. Anyway, thank you for checking back. Let me know if you have any more questions and check this video out for more helpful tips. And do me a favor, hit that subscribe button and I will talk to you guys in the next video.